Well, it's Sunday, April 19th. I guess spring is officially here in southeast Alaska. It was warm enough yesterday that uh, we opened all the windows and the doors in the cabin, turned the heater off, and we didn't turn it on last night. And it was comfortable in the house all night long. Well, clear and sunny this morning. Frosted a little bit, but it didn't freeze. Oh, well, that's one thing. The day before yesterday in the evening, I was out walking the dogs with my granddaughter, and a flock of sandhill cranes migrating north came by. It must have been 3,000 or so of them in that flock. And then last night when we were eating dinner outside, my wife and I, another flock came over the house, and there was several hundred in that one, so they're all headed north. Some friends have said they've been seeing hummingbirds coming around. So I guess that means spring's here. A nice day today. It's supposed to start raining tomorrow, but the temperatures are supposed to stay mild, actually in the high 30s at night and then the mid 40s in the daytime with the rain. The last few days it's been up to 50 in the daytime, so I've taken my long johns off and been comfortable without them on, so that's a good sign. I'm getting ready to do another herring survey flight, getting another sign of spring to down in Ernest Sound again, getting ready to take off. I've got the airplane pre-flighted here, or just about pre-flighted. i got to push it in the water now and do the wings and the tail and check those rear floats. It's about ready to go. I've got a supervisor over here keeping track of what I'm doing, making sure I, I do it right. Bald eagle there. Anyway, I'll guess I'll launch that, or get that plane in the water, and uh, get the rest of it pre-flighted.
Okay, everything looks good. My help disappeared, so I had to figure out how I'm going to get that off the ramp, but we'll get that taken care of, get it over, and get it fueled up and ready to go. Taxiing out from the seaplane dock, there's the hangars and the ramp. This is the seaplane area here. I'm going to head out into the Wrangle Narrows and warm up and get ready to take off to head down to Ernest Sound. This will be my second trip down to Ernest Sound for a herring survey. Third trip in the airplane since we got it going. It's still a little bit new, but it actually feels like riding in an old shoe. It doesn't smell like an old shoe, but comfortable anyway so I've taxied out here now and out in the Wrangle Narrows and turning towards the south I'm going to go ahead and take off to the south and just fly. It'll be a little bit of a left hand turn as we go around the corner here down the Narrows and then climb out and head off into the sunshine.
got up to 3,000 feet here, 3,500 feet. I'll climb a little bit more as we go farther south, but there's a lot of days where you never get this high. You never even know the mountain peaks are there. Boy, Wrangell Narrows there was on the right. It separates Mitkoff Island from Kupernoff Island. It is one of the major thoroughfares for the marine traffic coming up through southeast Alaska. It's too shallow for most of the cruise ships and stuff, but we get our ferries through there and the marine highway system, Alaska Marine Island Lines, and some of the other barges bring up most of our material through southeast Alaska and comes right through that channel. The real challenge when the tide's running and it gets real shallow when the tide goes out, we have over a 20 foot tide change here sometimes. Well, coming out uh, Blind Slough here, the south end of Rang uh, Mitkoff Island right now, and we're coming into Sumner Straits. See, Zimbabwe Island is the closest one. Vank Island is off to the left, and in the distance is Edelin Island there. Anyway, it's a beautiful day for flying. Coming up on Edelin Island now, uh, this has got some pretty good peaks on it here. Some of these peaks are 4,500 feet or so. This is the same route as it took in the earlier videos that I had when I took my wife down to go cranberry picking, just a different time of the year. So the lakes are still froze over here and still lots of snow on the mountains. Up ahead is uh, Zimovia Straits that separates Edelin Island from Wrangell Island and then down in the area where all the islands are there is uh, Tom's Place. It's uh, kind of a place where people live in their homes where they don't have any connection to electricity or anything. Uh, coming up into Menifee Inlet and off in the distance is Ernest Sound there. We're still on Edelman Island. And just to the right coming out here is Canoe Passage. That's a real narrow passage that goes between Edelin Island and Bronson Island. Bronson Island is just right here coming up now on the right and I'm starting down. I've been descending and I'm uh, going to circle around here a little bit and start getting ready to do my herring survey. Try to follow the shoreline along here to see if I can see any fish. Also looking for sea lions, whales, eagles, birds, things like that. Any of the predators for the herring. Busy here, get the notepad out and start writing things down on the map. Looking for critters in the water, checking out for fish. Swing around, that's looking back uh, to the head end of Ernest Sound towards the Bradfield Canal in that direction. Deer Island is right straight ahead now. We'll be coming back doing a survey along that when we get done, but I run out of battery on the camera before we come back. So. Anyway, we're just heading down the shoreline of Bronson Island and we'll be doing uh, some surveying here. It's a great day for it. The water's perfectly clear. There's good sunshine. Uh, visibility is good. We've got enough altitude that I can see a pretty good distance in any direction here. This is called Fisherman's Chuck here. This is the north end of Bronson Island. And that's Edelman Island there in the distance. The high peaks. And of course that actually right there on the side is Edelman Island too, right there on the right side. So. Flying along here at about a thousand feet, twelve hundred feet, something like that. Following the shoreline pretty close, you can see the fish. Sometimes you can see the fish in big schools out in the deeper water, but mainly where you start to see them is when they start coming in in the shallower water. They start coming up close to the surface. That's what I'm looking for there. This is a salt chuck right in the middle of Bronson Island. 
I don't expect there to be any fish in there, but you never know. It's got a real narrow entryway in it. The salt water comes in there and fills all those little lagoons up and stuff. Sometimes herring like to go into those places. There on the other side of it, um, on the, where these little ponds are, there's salt water there. And then there's a separation there, and that's canoe passage on the other side. circling around here to check all the areas out to see if I can see any fish. into the outer body of Ernest Sound now. There off to the left of the nose is Vixen Inlet. That's the prime place where the fish come in to spawn. We're still on the south end of Bronson Island here now, going around the corner. And then uh, now right off the nose to the left is uh, Union Bay. And then straight ahead in the fog bank up there is Lemisher Point. And Myers Chuck is there. That's Clarence uh, Straits up there in the fog Coming around now into the south end of Edlin Island, and there's three little streams along here that come out that are salmon streams. We frequently survey those for salmon, and I just happened to see a little spot of herring spawn in there in one of the fingers there by one of the streams. It doesn't show up here on the camera, but I circled here a few times looking to see if I could see any body of fish, if there was much there. There wasn't a big body of fish there, it just happened to be a little opportunistic spawn, I guess, in a spot that they don't usually spawn in. But uh, it give me something to look at the first time I've seen herring and spawn for quite a few years now. So I'll swim around here and get it mapped out and checked out. into Clarence Strait now. It's looking north up into Clarence Straits back towards Petersburg. Copper Cove is up there just on the right at the bottom of those mountains up there. I'm flying around to Onslow Islands looking for fish around here. There are quite a chain of islands here. There's not very much area but there's a lot of water area here and these fish like to come into all of these little shallow spots where the kelp is just right and stuff and spawn. So it's a pretty 
involved area to fly around and look. So, again, that's north of Clarence Streets there. Now looking towards the lower end of Clarence that way. Fog. I've got to fly down that way about 25 miles along that shoreline down to Ship Island to check out on the outer shoreline of uh, that's, uh, Cleveland Peninsula and going down that direction. And, uh, I'm not sure why it is on in Union Bay. I'm going to run out of film here pretty quick. Actually, not film, but run out of battery. So this is about the end of the flying adventure for the day. Still got about almost three hours of flying in on this day and we only got about an hour and a half of recorded flight time maybe a little less than that I was actually surprised that the battery in that little camera lasted as long as it did